So every year when we attend the March for Life, we go outside the Planned Parenthood and pray. Mm -hmm. And the clinic escorts, they're out there. And the clinic escorts are the people that help the girls get into Planned Parenthood to receive their abortions. And God really put something on your heart to tell the clinic escorts. Right. So God put in my heart to just go up to them and tell them that Jesus loved them. And so um, after a few minutes, I went ahead and decided, okay, Lord, I'm going to be obedient to what you're asking me to do. So um, two of the escorts walked up to them alongside Sophia. And as I'm saying, Jesus loves you. I instantaneously was put on my heart that um, this person is possessed. And I can just tell within looking into her eyes that there was something evil inside of her. And as we walked away, um, you told me, Mom, did you see her? She was possessed. And we both had that sense of that there was evil coming from her. Which it's no shock that there is demonic activity going on at Planned Parenthoods where children are being murdered day in and day out. I mean, in California, we know it's 434 children are murdered every single day to abortion. Women are currently being erased in culture, and I want to amplify their voices and share their stories. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to This is a Woman podcast. If you are watching, um, you can already see my guest is here with me. And if you are watching, you probably know who my guest is. Her name is Caroline. She is my mom. And I brought her on because um, we were just at the March for Life this past Friday mm -hmm. and in Washington, D.C. And this is something we've been doing since I was a freshman in college. And it's just been full of great experiences and a really fun time. And so I figured we can kind of give you guys a recap of how this year's March for Life went, but also just how all the March for Lives have gone that we've attended, um, why we started attending, the crazy, cool, God things that have happened at it. But anyways, everyone, this is my mom. She is the best, a lover to death. She's my best friend. She is a warrior in her local community fighting to protect children and make sure children get to hear the word of God. And I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for her. So welcome, Mom. Thanks. I'm excited to be here today. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said, if you're watching, you can see us. The quality is not as good because we're literally in our hotel room um, at the March for Life. But the March for Life themes this year, if you're watching, you can see my sweatshirt says, With Every Woman for Every Child. And so I loved that theme. The focus was on pregnancy centers, standing up for women. But let's go ahead and start back with our first March for Life. So when was the first time we went to the March for Life? We went in 2019. And I have never really, prior to 2019, I've never really been involved in the pro-life movement. Um, I always wanted to do it. Um, but it just so happened that in 2019, at, we were at a church event at church and they said hey is anyone interested and in want to go to the march for life mm -hmm. in dc and sophia was like hey mom why don't we do that and i yeah. thought oh that sounds like a great <laughs> idea let's do it yeah and it's crazy to think we literally mm -hmm. just went to that meeting and we were just like all right like let's just hear about why they're going to the march for life or like what the dates are what the cost is all of that like not even knowing what that would like result in today. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're not familiar, kind of like what got me on my pro-life journey, I've done an episode about that. Um, I believe it's episode seven or eight, but you can find that. You can hear more about just my journey about standing up for life and where I am today. But that's what kind of led us to going to that church session. And right. Um, right away we walked in and it was a small group and we kind of met ran into some people we've already known that we didn't even know went to our church so that was like a god thing right from the start mm -hmm. it was actually a mom and then her daughter that i went to high school with we were actually in no she was still in high school i wasn't at the time 
But so it was really encouraging to get to do the march with someone my age and one of our friends. Um, but so we said, all right, let's go to the March for Life. And at this point, we had done no pro-life things, no outside of Planned Parenthoods, no marches, no walks, nothing. Like literally no pro-life activism other than just studying up and learning about what abortion is, why Christians should stand against it. So we said, let's go big or go home. Um, so 2019, that was crazy. Just all the different things that have happened that year. We got here, we got ready to march. And maybe if you want to talk a little bit about some of the things you enjoyed from that year, the crazy things right. that happened. Well, just I kind of want to go back maybe a, a little bit before mm -hmm. that time. And I know we spoke about it on your podcast before, but I believe it was probably, yeah, it was 2019 in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, Sophia had come up to me and said, hey, mom, there's going to be, um, our pastor is going to be talking about. Or 2018 in the spring, because okay. then we marched 2019. So she, anyway, she says, mom, I want to go to this church event at, at night. Our pastor is going to be talking about abortion and about um his experience um and so i'm like okay yeah you know when your child says let's go to church mm -hmm. of course you want to go so her and i went and for me i just saw it completely change sophia and the direction mm -hmm. or god really led her at that time after hearing our pastor speak just the holy spirit just came upon her mm -hmm. and just gave her a passion for um babies in the womb and um, so then when we saw that we could have the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. to march for babies in the womb, um, we both thought, well, yeah, let's do it. And it was crazy. Like she said, we hadn't done anything like that before. And then we go to the biggest um, march for life, I think, in the world. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so 2019, we packed our bags and we head off to um, D.C., and we got to, when we got there, um, we went to the expo because the day before they have an expo and you get to walk around. And um, one of the booths that we came across was um, a booth um, and they were talking about a new movie that was coming out, mm -hmm. um, Planned. So I don't know if you want to get into that or we want to talk about that. Yeah, no, bit. we can talk about that. Um, so we met, uh, we had the opportunity, they said, do you want to go see um, a screening of the movie? And we thought, yeah, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. So it was, I think, 12 o'clock at night, we <laughs> went, it was super late, we're like, hey, we're going to do this. So we're, fortunately, we we're just in a smaller room in our hotel, and we got to see the movie on plan, which was a story based on Abby Johnson. And Abby Johnson, um, she was the director of, of Planned Parenthood. I think maybe in Texas, mm -hmm. and she actually, at that time, when she was working for Planned Parenthood, she won, I think, Director of the Year, yeah. in, maybe in the whole country. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so she is now speaking out, um, and she, her story basically talks, is her, um, um, her story about how she got involved with Planned Parenthood and what made her leave working for Planned mm -hmm. Parenthood. And now she's an activist and speaking out for babies in the womb. So we had the opportunity to go view that movie before it went out nationally. And um, it, I think for both of us, it just had a really, um, it, for me personally, it just really impacted me because I got to learn more about what happens um, at Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. and what happens to babies in the womb. And um, so what Abby, and then we got to meet Abby Johnson and we got to meet the actress um, mm -hmm. that played Abby Johnson. We got to speak to the producers yeah. and the director. So they came in and um, they spoke to us before and after. And I just remember Abby saying, you know, if this movie impacted you, I would like you to um, tell people about the movie. Mm -hmm. So um, at that point, I'm like, Okay, I guess we need to tell people about the movie. Yes. And um, we, do we want to get into the whole... Well, let's get into how the march went and then kind of what happened once we got home from the march. Okay, so, that sounds great. So pause on that, but yeah. remember the story of us being able to see it at the march and just being really impacted by it. 
Um, so that was one of the really crazy cool things to go do and see. And like you said, it was at midnight and we're like, yeah, let's just go do it. Um, one of the other things we, again, hadn't really ever done any pro-life activism. So we get here and we're looking at the schedule of different events that you can go to. And one of them was pray outside of Planned Parenthood. So at the time, we kind of, we genuinely went back and forth. Is that something we should do? It kind of seems, you kind of hear the lies the media tells you that the people that go outside Planned Parenthood are evil and mean and horrible and screaming. And so we weren't really sure about doing that. But luckily, one of our friends that was here was like, no, like, come on. Like, I do this all the time in California. Like, it's great. It's peaceful, all that. And I really think the only reason we ended up going is because we were like, well, you know what? screw it, we're in Washington, D.C., we came here to do this stuff, let's just go check it out, like, we'll go check it out, and if it's, like, really weird, and we're not comfortable about it, and it's not Christian, like, we can leave. Okay. Um, so we went, and it was just a phenomenal experience, it was just praying and worshiping and hearing people give speeches, because they did kind of plan, like, a little rally outside, specifically for the March for Life, um, but yeah, that was a really incredible experience. And then we can also kind of touch on the results of that once going back home, once we get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things was you touched on the expo. And so at the expo, there's probably at least 100 different booths. And so we're going through them. Very familiar with a lot of the groups because our church is heavily involved with keeping us informed on these organizations and how to fight for biblical values in the world. So one of the booths was Family Research Council. Um, that the president of Family Research Council, Tony Perkins, he's spoken at our church. We're very familiar with Family Research Council. So we stop by, and there's these two guys, probably like college age or freshly out of college. They're at the booth, and they're kind of just talking about their internship program. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that sounds like great. But like, I'm still just a freshman in college. Like, I'm only my second semester of college. So like, I'll look at that down the line. And then we ended up putting two and two together that um, the guys running the expo booth were current interns at Family Research Council at the time. So this is 2019. Then when I interned with Family Research Council in 2021, so two years later, that intern that I met at that booth that day ended up being my intern director. And the other intern ended up working at Family Research Council. And so now I'm great friends with them still, and it was just kind of crazy to, like, find out those, like, two boys that were just telling us about the F FRC internship, like, that two years later, he would become my intern director mm -hmm. that year. It was his first intern director. It was his first um, time, first semester being an intern director, and just, a, I think, a cool thing that God kind of worked out and to look back and see that I never would have guessed that year when meeting them that I'd be living in D.C. two years later and interning and all that. So that was really crazy. Um, the other thing is, uh, th this is kind of long talking about the first year, 2019, but just so many crazy God things kept happening. So we went to the Bible Museum here in D.C. Mm -hmm. for the first time. If you've never been there, definitely, if you're in D.C., go to the Bible Museum. Mm -hmm. It'll take you the whole day, but it's phenomenal. It's amazing. So why don't you walk us through the Bible Museum story? Right, so... Um, I was excited to go because they had that time they had a special um, exhibit um, on the life of Billy Graham. Um, so we, Sophia and I were there. We went with our other friends, um, and so we're walking through the Bible Museum, and I see someone, and they have their name written. And it says Graham, and we're like. Okay, must be a relative to <laughs> Billy Graham. So I was like, oh, my gosh, a relative of Billy Graham. Well, that's what I assumed. Mm -hmm. So um, anyways, I just was like, I'm going to go up to him and ask him. So I just went up to him. And, well, I think you kind of spotted him. I spotted him. Yeah. We're like, what should we do? We don't want to, like, bother him. But at the same time, we were really excited to um, to talk to him and find out a little bit more about who he was. Um, just because we had just went through the expo and um, of Billy Graham. So anyways, we just like, we go up to him and just said, hey, I see you have Graham. And um, he said, oh, yeah, I'm the, the Franklin Graham is my father and I'm the grandson of Billy Graham. So he was super sweet. Yeah. Like, he was super sweet. And we just talked to him for a few minutes 
Yeah, so I thought that was really cool that we got to talk to the grandson of Billy Graham. Yeah, and like I said earlier, this was like our first time doing anything pro-life, anything like activism for anything in public policy, biblical worldview. Like we had not done this stuff before. So we go here, we're like meeting Abby Johnson, we're running into um, Billy Graham's grandson. Like we're having all these like crazy interactions. We're like, what the heck is going on? Right, cause, well, because, you know, during the, in 2019 when we went, we didn't know anyone mm -hmm. except for what happened that two of our friends were going. I mean, we knew them too, but otherwise anyone in the pro-life movement maybe heard of their names occasionally, mm -hmm. but really didn't know anyone else. And didn't have like friends and stuff in the movement, really, right. other than the couple people that came from our church. Right. And I think that was the year when, with the elevator, we walked in. Yes. So the president of the March for Life, her name is Jeannie Mancini. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've seen pictures of her. Um, and so we were walking into the, in our hotel room, we we're getting to the elevator and inside the elevator is the president, uh, Jeannie Mancini. So we're going to the elevator yeah. with her. And I think I might've, or you might've said something yeah. to her, like, you know, we're just so excited to be here. It's mm -hmm. our first time here. And, you know, so that was kind of cool to jump in the elevator mm -hmm. with the president of March for Life. So it was just like all, you know, every time we've gone, there's always such really neat, um, God, things that kind of happen. Um, we get put in these predicaments yeah. <laughs> that have been really amazing. God, mm. God, uh, honoring kind of things, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so now let's kind of get to the actual march itself. So this was like all these things. I believe I think the Bible Museum happened the day after the March for Life, but everything else happened before. Like we hadn't even marched yet, and all this like <laughs> right. stuff was going on, and so. We're getting ready to march. You know, it's cold out. We're getting our stuff going. Um, my friend who was here, like, she's artistic and stuff, so she actually made, like, a little sign with me with the Proverbs 31 verse on it. And we just go out there. We walk to the mall. We're like, okay, we want to get there early. Like, they're going to have a rally. They're going to have great speakers. Like, let's get there early, get to the front. And we end up being front row to Ben Shapiro. Vice President Mike Pence was a surprise guest at the time. And, like, and then we started marching. And again, we had never done anything like this. So we're like, we don't know what this is going to be like. This could be crazy. This could be super calm and peaceful. We don't know. We know there's a lot of people showing up at it. But I don't think we even knew the extent of how many people showed up at it. And so I just remember going to it and being like, oh, my goodness, there's hundreds of thousands of people here. And a lot of young people, a lot of high schoolers, college mm -hmm. students, that was kind of shocking too. But I think what I was most shocked by is how peaceful the mm. whole event was. To have hundreds of thousands of people show up to March for Life and for it to remain peaceful, for no one there to be causing issues or causing a big problem. Right. It was peaceful as you're walking. It's... Um, it's a heavily attended event by Catholics. So as you're walking, there's different priests doing the prayers, um, doing different chants. People are singing hymns. People are singing worship songs. At that time, Roe v. Wade was still law. So a lot of hey, hey, ho, ho, Roe v. Wade, it's got to go chants. Um, lots of police there. And I just think there's lots of police at all the different rallies in D.C. Mm -hmm. um, there really is protests and rallies like nearly every day or every other day here in D.C. But nothing to this size, to this extent, to this well done. And even just the cops were so friendly. And I was just so impressed with how peaceful it was, how many people were there. It was it was amazing to experience that. Right. No, I agree. Um I, I, I was at first a little bit apprehensive, mm -hmm. um, not knowing what to expect. Um, like she said, there was over 100,000 people um, that marched. And, um, and yeah, it was so peaceful. There was just like this calming presence upon the people that were there. Everyone was getting along. Everyone's smiling. Everyone's happy to be there. And... Um, being that it was a march, um, wasn't really sure, you know, but it, it was amazing. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. The, um, just the Holy Spirit was upon us there as we marched to, um, the Supreme Court. And, um, it was just a beautiful experience. 
unlike anything I've ever experienced before. So, and you know, it's kind of cool. I think, I don't know if it was that year, or maybe the year after or so, but even the police were saying that the March for Life is <laughs> the most peaceful march that they have every year. Yeah. So it's cool to be part of something, you know, such, uh, it's a, a uplifting and peaceful. Yes, absolutely. And so this is the last thing we'll touch on for the 2020, 2019 March. And I promise you the other ones aren't going to be as crazy in depth because just so much stuff happened that first year. Finished the Women's March, or not the Women's March, the March for Life. Just a great, phenomenal day. We get back to the hotel, you know, go to sleep, um, get up the next day. And the next day was the Women's March. And if you're not familiar with the Women's March, in 2019, um, president Trump was president. And so it was basically an anti-Trump rally. And now it's basically just a pro-abortion rally. It's as anti-women as you can get. So the Women's March is not good. It's not for women. It's crazy. So we didn't, I think we maybe knew the Women's March was the next day, but we didn't really know where or what was going on and all that. So again, like this is our first time in DC since my eighth grade trip. And now I'm 19 at the time. Um, so we went to go to the White House. We're just checking out all the different monuments the next day. Um, just doing the basic touristy mm -hmm. DC stuff. And then we run into the Women's March people. And after spending the day with hundreds of thousands of peaceful people marching for life, it was disturbing to see the Women's March. Um, they were walking by the White House, not even looking at it with middle fingers up in the air at it. They had vagina hats on their heads. It was, I don't know if you want to kind of touch on how you felt seeing all that. Right. Yeah. Like she was saying, we, we knew that the March of Summer, we didn't know where. And, um, we, like she said, we decided to go to the White House that day. So as we're walking to the White House, we start seeing, um, the marchers for the Women's March and just a whole different vibe completely whole different vibe their signs were very vulgar and graphic um and there it wasn't peaceful and we weren't in the march it was we were just kind of i think the the women were kind of marching or going toward their location which i don't even know where it was yeah so we were just kind of crossing paths with them so we wanted to like she said wanted to go see the white house and take some pictures in front of the white house so we were taking our pictures and i you know, ladies were walking, and it was more than one person, and they were walking, like she said, wouldn't even look at the White House, and just walked by, and they were flipping off the White House. So it was just um, the differences between both, both marches were just completely um, opposite. One was very peaceful and uplifting, mm -hmm. and then the other one was very... Um, not so peaceful. <laughs> very angry. It was angry. Yeah. Very, yeah. very angry. Um, and people might say, well, of course they're angry. They're mad at Trump. They think Trump's horrible towards women, all these things. The march we went to the day before, Roe v. Wade was still in law. We're angry that 63 million children have been murdered since Roe v. Wade. We're actually very ticked off. We're angry that babies' body parts are being ripped to pieces. But we know we need to do things in prayer and in peace, and there's a time and place for things. And so, like, we have just as many, like, we have our reasons to be angry too, but we came together in prayer and worship and peace instead. And I think that's what you need to do. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so 2019, March for Life, absolutely phenomenal, life-changing, truly. So we come back from the March for Life, and this is kind of where we can touch back on the Abby Johnson story, seeing Unplanned. Um, it had a really big effect on both of us. I do think at that point I had done more research on abortion or looked and read into it more just because that was something that was really on my heart to do. So I think it had maybe even a bigger effect on you. And so you kind of, well, why don't you explain what you thought of to do for the whole movie? Right. Well, like I said, Abby had asked those who came and um, screened the movie if we can share um, about the movie to our friends and family. And God just placed it in my heart and basically said, Caroline, get a movie theater 
and I want you to to buy the tickets and um, I want you to invite your friends and family to come watch the movie and I was like what I, I don't want to how do I even do that I don't know if I want to do that but that movie was so impactful and I just was decided okay Lord I'm going to be obedient to what you're asking me to do um so um fortunately my husband is um is very supportive and I told him this wild idea and I said okay in our city I, I'm gonna see if I can buy out the movie and then sell the tickets to our friends and family so they can come watch it and promote the movie and so he said okay go ahead and do it so anyways we were able to get the the because we bought out the theater we were able to get the discount rate mm -hmm. and um, I'm like all right Lord so I just started texting friends and family and I don't even know where they stood on the pro-life move in if they were pro-life pro-choice mm -hmm. I just started texting out people I said you know what Lord you're in control I'm not going to worry, worry about mm -hmm. all that you, you know you you got that handled so I just texted people and messaged people and um I wasn't going to worry about it. people didn't respond mm -hmm. I, you know I was just left it up to God so long story short um we were able to fill the whole theater mm -hmm. it was kind of cool was, well, well, a couple of cool things about it is that um, because we had bought out the theater, Sophia and I were able to speak. So we were able to go in front of mm -hmm. our friends and family and go down to the, you know, to the theater. And we were able to talk to everyone and just talk to them for maybe like five, ten minutes yeah. about, you know, about the movie and about our experience. So that was a great opportunity. And then I remember that morning. I had one ticket left. I'm like, okay, great. We sold all, you know, mm -hmm. basically all of them except for one. And I thought, okay, thank you, Lord, for that. And then I get a text message from uh, someone who was coming and said, you know what? I have someone that's coming by chance. Do you have any tickets left? And I'm like, yeah, I have one ticket left. Yeah. So all tickets were accounted for. Mm -hmm. And so it was just... Um, it was just great, you know, yeah. to, to, and I guess I wanted just to, um, inform people mm -hmm. about the movie and really what's happening behind the scenes and plant and uh, plant parents, plant parenthood. Yeah. And, um, what abortion is. What, right. It, and it's a very, it's a very graphic movie. It's intense. Because that's what abortion is. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, and so I, I highly recommend to go see the movie you can go i know you can watch it uh free right now on amazon um prime or yeah. the amazon the movies that they have there mm -hmm. or you can even i think rent it on um different sites but um and if you have children i highly recommend they see it um if they're in high school mm -hmm. um uh, but as as a parent i always suggest that you watch the movie first and then you make a decision when to show your children the movie um so we had the, and then we actually went back i think a week later and we had more people come than uh, like the following week because we had some other people that wanted to show up so anyways yeah. it was just a, a great opportunity to bring awareness to our friends and family yeah i know it absolutely was and um because we did it where you live in my local community but i wanted to take some of my college friends to go see it mm -hmm. too and so the night it came out, I think I was actually able to get like six or seven of my college soccer teammates at the time. I said, hey, I'm going to go watch this movie coming out at midnight because, you know, we previewed it before it was out. And then it officially came out maybe a month or two later. Do any of you guys want to come? And six or seven of them ended up coming. And um, it was really cool. It was like once the movie was over, we stood in the lobby of the movie theater, I think, for like 30 minutes. And they just asked questions about different things related to abortion. I was able to kind of just explain things to them or tell them what I've learned and known. And so that was really cool. And then my roommate, my college roommate at the time, she wasn't able to go that night because she had, a, I think, a big test or something the next day. But she actually came with me to my hometown and supported me and watched the movie. And that was just really cool to experience that because I've lost a lot of friends for speaking out on this. So it was really encouraging to have friends kind of tag along mm -hmm. on that um all right but we will now go so we did the 2019 march for life in dc the next year we went to a uh, walk for life in los angeles following year was covid 
2022, we came back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this time we kind of, we, none of our church friends were going that we knew of. And we're like, all right, we're going back. Like, here we go. It was really fun because we came back January 2022. I had interned in D.C. of January 20, or the summer of 2021. So this time coming back to the city, I was like, I know the city, like the back of my hand. Here's where we can go. Here's all the different things. We just got to experience it um, from a different angle. And so again, crazy things started happening. So we got into town. Um, then the next morning we go, oh, well, Planned Parenthood. Let's touch on that real quick because that's what I was going to go to. After the 2019 March for Life, our first time at Planned Parenthood praying outside, we started praying outside the Planned Parenthood in Pomona. Um and that's one of the Planned Parenthoods in Southern California. We started going. There'd be one or two people outside. One faithful, amazing woman woman was always out there. Um, she's wonderful, just a prayer warrior. But we'd go, and there'd be a couple people here and there. And now, what is it, 2024, five years later, there will be on Saturday hundreds of people outside of that Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. praying because of love life. And so... It's so yeah. cool to like watch that and watch that first time we went meeting a couple people and now there's basically all hours that Planned Parenthood is open they have someone out there praying yeah, and it's amazing. it's amazing and if you're not familiar with how that works please feel free to like reach out to me if you want to do that please feel free to reach out to me or if you're kind of concerned or you've heard kind of the lies people spew about what happens outside of the Planned Parenthood, reach out to me. I'm more than happy to share with you all about that and talk about that. But back to 2022, we got to the March for Life in D.C. We're here. We go to the Planned Parenthood prayer vigil. Um, the same exact thing that it was in 2019. We go there. We're worshiping. We're praying. They're speakers. They have clinic escorts that stand outside these Planned Parenthoods to help, like, escort um, women in to the center. Um, yeah, it's just crazy. But so they were standing, like, what, a foot or two in front of us. Mm -hmm. And they would stand there, and they're just kind of looking around, looking at us, looking to see if there was any woman coming to come into the abortion clinic. But one of the speakers started talking about what an abortion is and how the process works. So literally explaining word for word, very graphically of what happens during an abortion. And the two clinic escorts in front of us had to start small talk like, oh, I like your shoes. And oh, how was it dropping your kids off at school today? Because they literally were not able to sit and listen about what an abortion is because they don't want to hear it. They don't want to know the truth. They don't want to know what they're escorting those girls coming to their doors inside the building to do. Um, but it was a great time. And you kind of had the idea to say something to not just one or two, but the, all the clinic, es clinic escorts we walked right. past. Yeah. And this was actually last year. So this is in 2023 um, that this happened. But we can... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was okay. Okay, then we'll we'll get we'll get back to the story when we talk about 2023. But now you have the preface for it. Yes. Okay, well, then in 2022, we go outside to the March for Life. Um, we were thinking about like, what what are we going to make for the sign? I always bring like a sign. Sometimes she'll grab like one of the live action signs or something or um, but I'm like, okay, what are we going to write on my sign? Like all this stuff. And so the night before we're kind of thinking that we narrow it down to abortion, the only surgery you're not su supposed to survive, which is true. Abortion is a surgery and or any, someone dies or someone dies. It, Someone's killed. Actually. Yes. <laughs> Anytime someone goes under surgery, if you're trying to get like your knee replaced or different things, or you're having heart surgery, brain surgery, whatever it is. You're not supposed to die. The goal is for someone to come out alive and with the things fixed. Abortion is the only surgery where someone doesn't survive because they are literally killed. And that's um, considered a successful yes, surgery. Yes, exactly. exactly. Um, horrible. Yeah. So that's the sign. And same thing as 2019. We got there early, got to the front. We're holding the sign. And it was like crazy, like pictures of that sign kind of went viral like it was like live action march for life students for life concerned women for america all these different organizations like the sign was getting posted everywhere so we're like ah oh, how cool is that like because it's such an important statement like it was a sign we really were like what do we want this to say like poured a lot of time thinking about it and so like 
again, I knew more people in D.C. at this point, kind of was more familiar with the pro-life world. But then I was like, oh, my goodness, the sign's going crazy. And like, again, this was six months after I interned in D.C. So all my D.C. intern friends were like, Sophia, we're seeing you everywhere. And like, yeah. it was just really funny and cool. Um to see that and then the other thing was we got to see one of the speakers you were really excited to see because you would watch him in shows growing up right so if you're my age Mm -hmm. um you might remember the show i think it probably came out in the 1990s um growing pains and kurt cameron was the teen idol back then and um anyways he now um speaks out um, and is a um, Mm pro-life advocate and he was their uh, main speaker and like Sophia said we like to get there early because we love doing the worship and like I said there is like hundreds and thousands of people and Mm -hmm. we get there like an hour early because we want to be up front right by the stage and so we were there with our signs and um, so a lot of the speakers they'll come up to that you know, there's like a, a divider, a gate, mm-hmm. I guess, between us. So he's walking up front. And so he's right there in front of us. And um, we were able to get, he was super sweet. We were able to take a picture um, with him. And we were able to, you know, just talk to him for just a quick bit and just say, you know, thanking him for what he does. And so that was really cool to be able to um, get a picture with Kirk Cameron. <laughs> yeah, I know it was. Like watch him walk by and we're kind of like, You know, that front area, um, there's just, like, that's where all the VIPs go, the speakers go, like, the different organizations that help with the March for Life go. So it was just kind of cool to stand up there and watch all those people walk by and take pictures of them. Um, Is there anything else from the 2022 year you want to talk about? Or I think that might be... No, I think that was kind of it. All right. Well, 2023, I already guys gave you guys a head start with the whole being outside Planned Parenthood. So back to that story. Right. What did you kind of feel like God put on your heart to tell to these um, clinic escorts? Right. So the event had ended. We ended in uh, prayer. And um, at the time, there was a priest speaking, and he wanted to end with our father. So um, the whole group of us that were there, and there was probably, what, maybe like 100 people that show up for this prayer vigil in front of Planned Parenthood. Yeah. So we're saying that I, our father, what I felt very was interesting was that the escorts that were there, they just started like getting really fidgety mm-hmm. when we started praying. And then we also said, um, we also saying God bless America. Yeah. And they were angry. <laughs> I've seen their faces and they were, they were, have this angry look on their face and we were saying God bless America. And I thought, okay, well, so anyways, the event ended, and I just told Sophia, you know, I just I want to pray for a little bit. So mm-hmm. I just started praying, and God tells me, um, or I, you know, in my mind, I feel like Jesus is leading me to tell. He says, I want you to go tell them that I love them. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you want me to go up to them and say, like, that you love them? So I start fidgeting because I'm like, <laughs> I don't, I don't, do I really yeah. want to go up to these people and talk to them and tell them that? So I remember, I don't know if Sophia, if you remember, I'm sitting there, I'm fidgeting like, okay, I guess I got to go. And then some lady comes up to me. She's like, oh, honey, are you okay? Or do you need a ride somewhere? I said, oh, no, I'm fine. I'm just, I'm, we're good. So Sophia has no clue. <laughs> I'm all, going. girl, what's going on with you? <laughs> <laughs> so she's next to me and there's two escorts that are on the stairs and I just, you know, Sophia's following me. I go up to him. I said, and I just told him, I said, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. And they looked at me and just with a blank face and didn't say anything. And I turned away and walked away. And then there's two other escorts, maybe about 10 feet from Mm -hmm. the other two escorts. So Sophia comes with me and I go, it was a man and a woman. And I look at them both. And I said, I just want to let you know that Jesus loves you. And as I'm saying this, and I'm looking at the man, and I look toward the woman, and is in the middle of my sentence. And this is might be kind of um, strange, but it's it's true. And um, as I'm saying, Jesus loves you. Instantaneously in my mind, I'm thought, Oh my gosh, this 
this lady is possessed or has a demon or and I there was something in her eyes mm -hmm. when I was looking at her that I knew instantaneously that there was evil coming from her and um, like I said I just said Jesus loves you and they did not respond and she just gave me this piercing look and I walk away I'm like oh my and so my mind I'm thinking oh my gosh there's evil in her and as we're walking away um, Sophia goes to me mom mom mm -hmm. did you see her she's possessed and I was like oh my gosh I'm like yes Sophia I we anyways long story short we both mm -hmm. saw and felt the exact same thing. Yeah, and there was multiple people you'd said it to, and when I said, "Mom, did you see?" and you go, "Oh, that one." Like we were on the same page, and like maybe some of you are uncomfortable with that or different things, but like people, that's true. People here on Earth are demon possessed. Like that is a situation that is here on Earth. Um, and yeah, it was the same woman, and it was just her. It was just so evident in her eyes, and we just. It was crazy to see, but unfortunately, it wasn't a shock at all because what happens at Planned Parenthood is demonic. Like, the Bible is very clear that out of everything God created on those first six days, we are his favorite creation. He made us in his image, and that when a baby is formed in the womb, he's knitting them together in his mother's womb. He already knows the plans for their life. So when you have a building that all they're doing is murdering babies day in and day out, that is demonic and that is evil. And so as shocking as it was, it's also not shocking at all. Right. Yeah, it was yeah, something I've never experienced before. Yeah. And I'm sure not too many people have experienced that either. Mm -hmm. But it was just... Um, crazy mm -hmm. how how we both sensed that and like she said I think I told that to eight different escorts um and um yeah the the other seven of them they just looked at me and kind of like mm -hmm. okay Jesus love it, whatever you know yeah. they didn't really have any response but that one it was just something so different about that lady and you know and I throughout that year I would pray for her and I would tell the story I would always just pray for her. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I don't know where she's at today, but yeah. hopefully she comes to know Jesus as her Savior. Yes. Yeah. So that was kind of the start of the 2023 March for Life. And I just wanted to hop to that so you guys didn't have too much of a split in between that story that I started to tell too early. But the 22 March for Life, we go home in January after the March for Life. I end up working um, for my first big girl job that February, I met my boss all that started March 1st. So the I think it was my second week into working, I had to hop on a conference call to help plan the California March for Life. And that was so cool that in 2019, I attended my first March for Life in Washington, D.C. And now something I do for a living is I help plan the California March for Life. My organization I work mm -hmm. for is California Family Council. And that's what we do. We partner with the D.C. March for Life national team to host the California State March for Life. And that's just like such a God thing, full yeah. circle. When we went to that March for Life in 2019, if someone were to say, hey, Sophia, by the way, in 2022, you are going to help plan the California March for Life. And like I went to go pick up the big banner. Like if you look, ever see the March for Life pictures, you see the big banner everyone holds up like – I went to go that June of 2022, that's when the California March for Life was, I went to go pick up the California March for Life banner and unrolled it in my hotel room to make sure there was no er like errors in it and just was sitting there and I was like, wow, God, like how cool are you? Yeah. And like how how faithful he is to us when we're faithful to him. Yeah. Um, so that was just like a total wow moment. But yeah, so... Can I just add yeah, something yeah. to that for 2023 when we went? Yes. So like we said, like we always like to get there early because mm -hmm. we want to be up front. We want to see the worship. We want to be up there in front to worship and to see here or maybe even take pictures with the guest speakers. So in 2023 when we went, 
um, what well, was so cool, and because of what she does with um, California Family Council, like she said, they put on the March for mm-hmm. Life in California, so they're working directly with the um, March for Life that puts on it in D.C., so in 2023, and it was such a like God moment for me. What a blessing it was for me as a mom that year. Yes, I got to go. I went up to the front, but Sophia actually went mm-hmm. on stage at the end of the event, and um, I thought, "Wow, God is so good." Two year, like she said in 2019. If God were to say, you're going to come back here in 2023 and your daughter's going to be on that stage, yeah. I'd be like, how? How would that <laughs> even happen? We don't even know anyone here. Yeah. And in 2023, at the end at the end of the um, that rally, they invited up uh, people from all over the country mm. who are who um, helps out or is a um, pro-life activist. Pro-life, right. and- so Sophia was able to walk on stage in 2023 yeah. and I was able to record her and take pictures. <laughs> I was a very proud mom. So God is just so good. He is just, mm-hmm. um, it's just been great what to, what, what I've witnessed, um, him doing, um, through Sophia. Mm-hmm. And so it was just really cool yeah. for me as a mom to see her on stage. Yeah. Crazy, yeah, crazy, crazy. It crazy. was crazy, and it was funny how we talked about Kirk Cameron walking in front of the area, and us being like, "Kirk, Kirk," a game picture. Like, I got to walk in that area in twenty twenty three. Yeah, like, mom, do you want a picture with me? <laughs> like, well, it's funny because because yes. we both got there early, but she, she, you know, I was on this side of <laughs> of the gate, and yeah. she was on the VIP side, so we were still together, but yes. we had this gate, gate in between, between us. us. She yes. was considered a VIP. Yes, so. and so that year we were trying to think of a sign because like even though I now go to like the backstage area I'm still marching I still have my sign like that's what I'm here for to march and like Mm -hmm. make sure like our voices are heard for the children for the babies so we're like what should we do for a sign and this is kind of when I started getting into like not only am I pro-life because of the babies but I'm pro-life because what abortion does to women Mm -hmm. and it's truly horrible um totally horrible I've had done a podcast um if you guys haven't listened to my first ever podcast with a guest so it's episode two with Erin Getz she's the state director of March for Life we kind of dive into how harmful abortion is for women as well as I have done a podcast with Heidi Matsky a pregnancy center director we also go really into depth about how abortion harms women so if you haven't checked out those two episodes go look for them the Heidi Matsky and Erin Getz one but anyways My heart was really now not just for the babies, but also for the women. So I was like, what should we do for a sign, all that? So we ended up doing a sign that says, a guide to women's rights. Step one, let them be born. Trying to focus kind of on women and the let them be born and we have the right to life. Um, So again, we got there. And so for the first little bit, I stood with her on the other side of the fence. So we had our sign and like, same thing. Everyone was asking for pictures of the sign. It ended up on... Like, March for Life still posts it. It's on CWA, YWA, and it's just really well, cool. Well, I don't know if you remember so, that Franklin Graham posted it on oh, his Twitter yes. account. And it went viral because Franklin yeah. Graham, uh, you know, he yes. posted. And it's a picture. Of, and, of course, I'm in there with him. Yeah. <laughs> so it's both We're, like, of us. smiling, holding it. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally, like, crazy. Um, so now 2024, this year's March for Life. Um Really cool because working with the March for Life team for the California March for Life, um, the three girls who are in charge of the state marches, they're similar age to me, a little bit older. So I've actually become really good friends with them and they've been able to hang out with my mom when they've come to the California March for Life. And so Erin Getz, who's the state director, she's amazing. I'm so proud of her. Love her to death. Totally phenomenal. Again, if you haven't listened to my podcast with her, she talks about how she was actually Mm pro-choice and like went to Bernie Sanders marches and like worked in very like pro-choice liberal jobs in college. And then she became pro-life in college, which you normally see the opposite happen because of the indoctrination. But so that's a really powerful testimony she shares. Go listen to that episode if you haven't. Mm -hmm. But because we've become friends with them this year, we were able to get my mom Mm -hmm. a backstage pass. That was really cool. Which is really cool. So 
anyways, like I said, we're literally still here in the hotel from the March for Life. So everything we share now is like three days fresh, two days fresh, one day fresh. Um, but so we're on the flight coming here. And we started looking through our old March for Life photos from 2019, from 2022, 2023, because I started thinking, I'm going to go look at those photos because, like, I'm sure the people in the backgrounds of the photos or next to us in the photos, different things. Like, I now know a ton of people mm -hmm. in this movement, in this, like, pro-life world. I'm like, there has to be people I, like, let me go see if there's people I know in these photos. Like, that would just be so funny. So I'm looking at the 2022 photos. And again, this is where I said we marched in January. I met my boss in February, started working in March for California Family Council. So on my phone, I actually have a video he took at the March for Life while he was on stage. Um, it was like a selfie video. And it was him and then my coworker, Greg. So Jonathan and Greg, they were taking that photo. And... Um, it was just like, I don't know why it's even on my phone. I must have like needed it for him to use for like social media or something. So he's doing the like, like the live or no, like the little selfie video. And I pause it and we're in the back of his <laughs> selfie video. And so I screenshot it and send it to them. And it was literally Jonathan Greg in the selfie video and me and you in the background. And I sent it to And of to course them. we're there because we're always up front. Yeah, up front <laughs> with our <laughs> sign. Yes. Yeah. And so I screenshot it and I send it to them. And I'm like, this is from January um, 2022 March for life. I met you guys in February. Like how cool is that? Like when I was sitting or standing there, like at the March for life and we we're clapping for just all the people like they had up on stage that help with the state marches, etc. Like if you were to be like, Hey Sophia, that guy right there. And that guy, like those are going to be your boss and your coworker and a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be working for them in California and you're going to meet them in less than a month. And and then three months from now, you're going to be helping plan the California March for Life. I'd be like, yeah, right. LOL. Okay. Yeah. Like crazy. Yeah. Like absolutely crazy. And then the other one was looking through the old pictures. Um, again, the pictures of Kirk Cameron. And next to Kirk Cameron is Macy Petty, who's now a friend of mine. Um, we kind of work together on the life issue, on the woman's sports issue. Total amazing girl. Total sweetheart. I was actually with her in Arizona last week on the women's sports issue. But she was interning at the March for Life at the time. So she's literally there in the picture I took of Kirk Cameron. And then the next photo is a picture of me and you with Kirk Cameron. So I had handed her my phone and was like, can you take a picture of us? And she's like, yeah, sure. And like had no idea who she was at the time. She didn't know who I was at the time. And now we're like friends. And like it was just so cool yeah. to kind of like look back and see this. So that was on our flight here. We get here. Um... And we're having dinner in the hotel lobby. The hotel we stay at is, like, the one that everyone that comes to the March for Life basically stays at. So then we're in the lobby, and we're having dinner with one of our California friends. My boss comes in. We're seeing another group of our California friends here, like, some of our other pro-life friends. Like, it was just, like, a fun pro-life reunion. And, like, knowing everyone and, like, from, like, basically doing this by ourselves, like, in 2019 and in 2022 to, like, now coming and like seeing friends right and like knowing everyone it's just like really cool the relationships like god has brought into our lives and stuff i guess yeah, yeah. but yeah so the 2024 march life we both have our backstage passes which i know i was excited you got one especially because of the people we got to meet back there this year yeah it was really exciting so um and what well, was kind of cool too this year uh, was that it was actually snowing. Mm -hmm. So we had been to the March for Life before when there's been snow on the ground. Yeah. But on Friday, this Friday, it actually snowed the whole time. So, um, which was beautiful. It was cold, but it was beautiful and there was something different. So that was kind of cool just to have, you know, mm -hmm. be there and be in the snow. But anyways, we got to meet um, the 2024 National um football, Michigan football champion coach, Coach Harbro. Right? Har yeah, Coach Harbro. And so from was, Michigan. From Michigan. So he was like a guest or a surprise speaker. And so I got to take a picture with him and I got to go up to him and, and introduce myself. And it was just really cool to see um, someone that's been in the 
in the limelight because of his national championship. Um, and to be able to talk to him and to take a picture with him. So that was really cool. Such a nice man. And um, so I was really excited to mm -hmm. be able to take a picture with him. And then also during that March, um, not backstage, but later on, I was able to take a picture with Dr. Alveda King. And um, she was at, toward the end of the march, she was at the Supreme Court and she was speaking. As we're walking up, she's singing um, the song, This Little Light of Mine. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, she is the niece of, um, you know, Dr. King. So that was kind of cool to be able to see her and get a picture with her and hear her sing. And so that was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. And so we got to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we were um, going back and forth from like being inside the speaker's tent to like out front and stuff. And so one time we were getting like super cold because it's snowing and all that. And so we're like, let's go back inside this, the speaker's tent for a little bit. It's the VIP tent. And we go back in and everyone's all circled up and oh, taking pictures and stuff. And so we got to um, not only take a picture with Coach Harbo and Alvita King that day, but also with Speaker Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House. Yeah. And it was just really cool to just say, hi, Speaker um, Johnson. We're from California. And he's like, oh, that's a fight. And I'm like, yeah. Um, and get a picture with him because, you know, there's no – perfect person in this world. There's definitely no perfect politician, elected official in this world. Um, you want to vote for the best elected official. You want to do what's right, but you have to know that like ultimately God is the only king and the only savior of this world. Um, but it's really awesome when there is elected officials that are godly men and women and stand up and actually live out their biblical values. And Speaker Johnson is one of those. Right. And he is just... Not just recently, not just under the limelight, but I actually work with a lot of people that have worked with him in the past before he was elected official, and they all say the same thing, how amazing he is, how true man of faith he is. And so it was really cool to know that there's a speaker of the house um, here that is just a man on fire for God, and that we got to meet him and take a picture with him and all that. Yeah, it was really cool to see someone from... Um, you know, the Capitol to come, or in Congress to come, or the Speaker, to actually come on stage and speak on behalf of Babies in the Womb. Mm -hmm. So I just so appreciate his boldness in coming out and just hearing a lot of what a great man he is. Mm -hmm. And which and from what I'm told, he's well-respected mm -hmm. on both parties. So um, Which is very rare nowadays. Right, yeah. So that, that, that was kind of... It was really cool to be able to take a picture with the Speaker of the House. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that was. And so we marched through the snow. It was so amazing. Um, even though the weather was crazy, even though it was literally snowing, still hundreds of thousands of people showed up to March for Life. Um, it's really fun to march in a world that is a post-Row world. So people might think, well, why do you still need to march for life? And just because Roe has been overturned with the Dobbs decision, abortion is still legal in many states. All it did was send the issue back to the states. Um, but we're going to march until abortion is unthinkable because it's horrible that it's an accepted and thought of a thing. It's horrible that women are lied to, that it's their only option, or they can't be successful without it, or that it's safe or okay for them. Um, yeah, it's now just talking through this episode, I'm definitely going to have to have some doctors and nurses and experts about what abortion does to women and all that. we got a couple more episodes going of that, so stay tuned for that. Um, but March for Life, it was a wonderful day. It was great to get to see all of our friends and get pictures with them and hang out with them. Um, there was just some really powerful testimonies shared at the march um, from a woman who was human trafficked and sex trafficked to mm. homelessness to finding help at a pregnancy center to now being the director of the pregnancy center. Just... Jean Marie was her name, and so I know March for Life will be posting her testimony and all that, and that was yeah. totally she was, phenomenal. She was just on fire. On fire. Yeah, totally on fire. Um, 
But so the March for Life ended. We went to the Rose Dinner for the March for Life. So we got to see all of our friends there and hang out at that. But then, like we mentioned earlier, what comes after the March for Life? The Women's March. So now it wasn't just an accident um, stumbling upon them. But I told my mom, we're going to go to the Women's March and I'm going to do some interviews of the women. And so we went. There was literally, like, I was guesstimating 200, but I think it was even less than that, like 100 people that showed up for it. (sighs) Being at that rally was horrible because we were hearing women shout their abortions proudly. Um, Lies, literal, literal lies just being spewed, and it made me so angry, honestly, because I'm like, you are just lying to these women here, and they don't know better, which is also their own fault. We have so much research out there, like you can know better at this point. You're, you're um, choosing to not know, um, but. One of the speakers goes, "Yeah, we have a low turnout today, but that's because of the weather. Was it cold? Yes, it wasn't snowing, and." Because the weather, they only had 100 people show up. Okay, well, it was snowing the day before, and hundreds of thousands of people showed up to March for Life. So we know we're on the right side of history. So it doesn't matter if it is pouring, if it is hailing, if it is snowing, if it's negative 10 degrees. When you know you're doing what's right and you're on the right side of history, you're going to show up and keep doing it. The weather's not going to stop you. But we went, did interviews. I'm going to do a whole podcast episode showing you guys some of the interviews, talking about the Women's March and how that went. But I guess just to sum it up, those people are absolutely broken. They are broken people that have been lied to, Mm -hmm. that have followed the lies instead of doing the research themselves, Mm -hmm. that have told themselves and been told by the government, by their leaders, by the rally leaders, that they're victims to basically everything. (coughs) Um, And that left them in being broken. And does my heart break for them? Yes. But my also, I guess... It's a balance of my heart breaks for them and I'm praying for them and I want them to know the truth, but also the balance of their choosing to be ignorant to reality. We know too much nowadays. The science is there. The information is there. The truth is there. They're choosing to be ignorant, but I think a lot of it has to be being told is they are being told on social media by these people all the time that they're the victims. They're victimized and all that. And myself as a 23 year old woman and a Latina, I don't feel like a victim. And because we're not. And so they're lied to. Um, It was a really interesting day. It was a sad day. Again, I'll get into the details of the interviews and share some of those and do a podcast on that. So stay tuned for that. But is there anything you want to say about our experience at the Women's March this year? Um, I guess one of the things that stood out that I thought was a blatant lie was one of the speakers was saying how if you've had a miscarriage that's also considered an abortion. Those two things are completely separate. Mm -hmm. And she was spewing a lie saying that if you have a miscarriage, then that's an abortion Mm -hmm. and then you will go to jail. I I don't even really kind of know what she was saying. No one currently, like no state in the United States, there's no situation where you will go to jail for having an abortion. So let me just get that straight right now. That is an absolute 100% complete lie. And, like, I'm not just saying that because I'm pro-life. I literally study law for a living. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not the case. If you have a miscarriage, first of all, miscarriage and abortion, like you said, so different. Mm -hmm. There is no state, no law, where a woman will go to jail for having an abortion. Actually, pro-lifers want to make sure that never becomes a law. There's no one on the pro-life side that wants that to happen. Because we also understand women are being lied to by doctors. So, but anyways, go on. Yeah, no, so I just wanted to say that it was so interesting how she was telling the men and women who were there Mm -hmm. that a miscarriage is an abortion. And just a lot of untruths that were being spoken um, Mm -hmm. that, that day. And so that just kind of broke my heart. You know, just trying to bring fear into women and, um... Yeah, it was just really shameful to hear the things that that she was telling the people out there. And like Sophia said, do your research, um, educate yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, that's kind of what I've done. And I just want to say that I have a heart for 
um, young girls or any woman who has had an abortion. Mm -hmm. um, as we have been praying outside of Planned Parenthood, and you see those girls going mm -hmm. in there. Um, and it's very sad to see them walking out, and they're hunched over, barely able and, to walk, and they're they're afraid, and and you can see the fear, and they're scared, and there's nothing proud to shout your abortion when you mm -hmm. see those young girls coming out. So I absolutely, my heart goes to those girls. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I do also want to share is an organization that I've been part of, or a nonprofit, a Love Life who does go out on the stairs of Planned Parenthood and prays and talks to the girls and offers them hope and offers mm -hmm. them a future. And that is what we need. We need to stand up and be the voice for those babies and be there for those women who don't know what to do and are afraid. And the only thing they know to is go to Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. And so I am just um, so grateful for what Love Life has done for these women. Um, I've had the opportunity to um, go to a few baby showers for some of these girls who Love Life has put under their wing, has helped them, been, has been mentors, has offered housing for them, mm -hmm. has been through with them the whole nine months. And after, you know, yeah. been to baby showers, and, and I haven't been to a birthday party yet, but they even have a birthday parties for some of these women after their baby turns a year old. And um, so... You know, you hear a lot of times you hear like, oh, pro-lifers hate women yeah. or where are they after the baby's born? They're not going to be, you know. And there's so many organizations as coming to the March for Life since 2019. As you go through the expo, there's so many different organizations and pregnancy centers that are there to help women and be with women. So um, I'm just very proud to be part of Love Life and to be part of going to different um, pregnancy centers and seeing what they're doing, helping women, um, supporting women, and being there for them. And even, even if a woman decides to have an abortion, they're still going to be with them and they're going to provide that support and the, the healing because mm -hmm. God is a... Um, a loving God and yeah. he's a forgiving God and he's a redeeming God and he will um, forgive. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it, it just really, um, it, 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 I'm so happy to see that there's so many organizations that are there for women to help them and, you know, help them on their path through pregnancy mm -hmm. and after pregnancy as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so, if any of you that are listening are interested and you might not be able to make it out to the D.C. March for Life, but you want to learn if there's a March for Life in your state, um, again, you can always reach out to me, DM me on Instagram, um, anything like that on the This Is A Woman podcast Instagram account. But if you go to marchforlife.org, you can see I think they're up to either 12 or 16 state marches this year. If you're in California, ours is April 22nd at the state capitol, so be there or be square. But as well as anything that we've talked about today, if you are um, found yourself in an unexpected pregnancy and don't know where to go to for help and think Planned Parenthood is your only option, that's not true. There's pregnancy centers that are amazing, and I'm more than happy to help you connect with the one that's most local to you. If you want to look to getting and praying outside Planned Parenthood, look into Love Life. See if there's Love Life going out into your local community and doing that. If not, go by yourself. You don't even have to talk to anyone going in and out. Just go out there and pray and have that presence of prayer. But there's so many amazing pro-life organizations. If you really want to learn in depth more so about what an abortion is, how that happens, visit Live Action. Check them out. Go watch the movie Unplanned by Abby Johnson if you haven't yet. But any questions you, if you're listening now and you feel like you have a question about life, you have a question about abortion, you have a question about how, if there's an organization that on something specific in the life issue, like please reach out, please send a DM. I'm more than happy to answer your question as best to my knowledge. Um, but I'm looking forward to the 2025 March for Life and just who knows what's going to where, who knows what we're going to be sitting at next year and thinking, if you told us this in the 2024 March for Life, we would have never believed it because that right. just seems to always happen. Yeah. So, so cool. So cool. 
Um, being pro-life is to be pro-women. Stand up for life. Be a voice for the voiceless. But thank you all for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for having me, Soph. Yes. All right. We'll see you all next time.